Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this episode we're going to continue to work on the MGA. We still have a bit of rough work to be done to straighten up all the panels especially in the back. We need to fix the rear end because that is also badly damaged and it's even worse than the front. But first of all I will need to take the boot off. Working on your own is uh, always a bit of a challenge, especially with bonnets and boots, because you can't let it flip or drop. So. And luckily, this is aluminum and not very heavy. Well, as you can see, the boot is in a pretty good condition, not really damaged a lot. However, Right here, I can see the panel has gone down, so that's an area to re-weld. But this whole area is a bit of an issue. So this is the site, which is still intact. So I'm just gonna trace along the curve and see how that matches up to the other side. So let me put the template up that we made on the good side and see where it brings us on this side. So as you can see, this whole side here has been pushed down a bit, so we will have to lift this. We got a pinch here because this whole panel has been pushed backwards so and inwards. So that's a, a bit of work to get this straightened up. So we will have to pull this back out. So it comes that way. Um, so this is going to level out again. And on this side, we really have to do a lot of work. If you're looking on the line of the fender, you know, that's where the fender should stick against, and this all comes out. In fact, that's in the right place, but all this here has to be pulled out to the outside. And at the same time, we need to lift this up. So this is going to be a little bit of work. I will have to disconnect the gas tank for sure. And then uh, we'll see how we get it. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be an easy job, but we will try it. And here and there we have a bit of metal which is cracked. So this is one area which we have to weld up after we push this panel out. The same thing is true here at the inside of the car. Uh, we have to push this down or push this panel up and then spot weld it again. And then we have the panel here which is bent because we got the side impact so hopefully that stretches out a bit. So whenever I'm trying to get dents out of a car and I'm by no means an expert I'm always trying to pull out the dent in the direction of the actual impact the same angle. So I'm going to start with freeing up some of those cables so I can really do a proper pull. So I'm going to disconnect the hoses of the gas tank. I've placed a little hydraulic beak inside and supported with a metal bar underneath. And I'm going to try to push it open a little bit so I can disconnect the filler of the gas tank because right now I cannot. All right, let's see. You see it coming up. So that is under tension, so that has lifted up a bit. And release the pressure and see if that helps. There we go. You can see these beaks are quite 
handy. Now this is only half a ton, and that's kiloton. That is not a lot, but it's enough sometimes for small areas like this. Just gonna tape off the gas tank. Now I probably will change the gas tank later to an internal one, to a fuel cell. But I need to check what the regulations are for this type of a car. I'm going to use my skylift here to move that forward close enough to the car in the right angle so I can pull on it. And I think that's about right. So if I'm going to pull this way, I will pull backwards and hopefully out a bit, but maybe I need to move a little bit more to the side. But I could use the other hook on that side to clamp it onto and then just pull. All right. All right. So I have the beak reinstalled, trying to get this dent out. So let's see if that is going to work. I have it supported underneath on the beam, so I don't damage the car too much. Uh, that is tough. Let's try it one more time. fitted a small cylinder underneath and let's see if we can now get it a bit more pushed. I think that works a bit better. All right. So I'm going to move it a bit back a little bit backward. So we can try it on that other side. Okay. I 
So I'm going to continue like this until I have this really level. I'm going to try to pull out the small dents. And I've used this before. This is actually a dent puller for plastic taps. But I'm using a little bolt underneath so I can squeeze out the dent. And let's see. So the dent came out already quite a bit. And here you can see my little bolt. And that works, of course, now I have a hole, but that's not a big deal because I need to weld this up anyway. And this whole area where the funnel used to be for the gas tank, that is also going to be welded up because I will have the gas tank inside. So oh, let's see if we can get this dent out. And for that, I'm gonna use a plastic pull. Not sure if it's going to work on this card, but we can give it a try. Normally, you would use this kind of stuff for scratch free or repair free dent removal. I think this one is a bit too big. This one might actually do the job. All right. So let's see if we can do this. And for that, I already have it degreased. I put some hot glue up on the tab. And just gonna let it cool down now and then we're gonna try to pull it up. Not sure if it's gonna work. The metal panel might be too strong on this because there's some enforcement in the back, so it may not work. But for normal dents, that is working quite well. So let's see if we can get this dent out a bit. I doubt it, but then again, you never know. Okay. You can see it, it comes, huh? See how it pulls on the panel? But not enough, huh? Now this puller is a bit cheaper. Ah, it pulled off. Some alcohol and it will come loose. And now of course we went through the paint, but that doesn't matter really. Um, we can give it another try. But the problem is there is a big piece of metal underneath, so this is not going to work too well. Right, so I'm going to try with a big bar to push out the dent a little bit, if that works. And that's about as far as I can get it. Right, so the rest will be, I guess, polyester. So we might still want to hammer here a little bit on this side before we're going to trial fit the actual fender. All right. 
Now I need to knock in this part here, which is actually for a bolt, and that is a bit bent. That might not be that easy. So let's see. Let's see if we put the bonnet on, if we still have this big gap in the corner. And this is where you used to have a gap, which was this high up. Now it is as good as flush, especially if we go in to lift it up a bit in the back here. So I think this will be quite all right uh, the way it is. All right, so that's good uh, or reasonable good. Next up will be filling up all the dents and sanding it down. Most of the dents are out of it. But before I do so, I want to make sure that the fender is fitting because I'm not sure on this side here, we might have to push a bit over here because I think this is way too far in. I installed the fender and right here, it looks okay, but over here it's a different story, but I'll show you that in a second. Here, well, we're gonna need some polyester, but I need to do some fine adjustment in the back here so it comes flush and the gap here is a little bit too big. It's about half a centimeter, but that's just because the bottom part is sticking out. So that should be okay. But let me show you this side. So this is where the part joins the door. And of course it has to go a little bit closer, but you can see we have a pretty big gap here. So this whole panel from as of that point has been dented in. So that's the one I now need to push out. And that might not be an easy push, but we'll give it a try anyway. I'm gonna use a big ram, which is gonna push from the other side instead of pulling it. Uh, I think I can block it towards the uh, roll cage on the other side and then I will be able hopefully to push this out. I have cut a little piece of oak and drilled a hole in the middle so the bolt in the back of the panel can fit through it. Otherwise I'm going to push on the bolt and then that would not be right. So now I can push around the panel and the bolt will be sticking through. Now sometimes you have to make small things. To push out that big dent, I'm going to use this heavy hydraulic cylinder, which is a 10 ton one, with a big foot that I can use to push against the side. And then I'm gonna extend it towards the other side of the roll cage, and I will have this foot right here onto the roll cage. And that's about the right length. So let's install it. I have the jack extended all the way to the other side, to the bottom of the roll cage. And this is a foot big enough to press on this piece of oak. And hopefully everything will fit. It might be a little bit tricky in the beginning. The jack that I'm about to use is a 10 ton jack, so. That should be enough, and hopefully I don't need to push that hard at all because this is just sheet metal. Now I have tension. So let's see if this is going to work or not. I can hear a crack, which is already a good thing. So let's see what happens. If we press a bit, you can see that we are pushing it out slowly. Closer. I will have to push it a bit more because it's going to bounce back for sure if I release the pressure.
And that should be about it. I'm just going to release it a bit and see what it does. Now you can see it's coming back, which is not what we want. So I have to push one more time. I think this is about it. I'm not gonna get it much more. I can try a little bit more here, but that will be about it. Now here we still have a small gap, and for that one, I'm going to use this little press here. I can stick it in between the roll cage and the frame, and hopefully we can push it out. So I'm gonna use a piece of wood. This little jack, and hopefully, that's going to do the job. So, let's see. I don't want to have my fingers in the way. It's not pushing yet. Now it starts to push. I think it does push. Yep, it does. I'm not too happy uh, because on the roll cage it's round. So. Right. So that is good. It's moving it and the gap is closing. I'm just going to give it a little bit more because things always come back. release it a bit and see how far it comes back. And I think that this will be pretty much all right uh, once the piping is in. Try it one more time. All right. Yeah, this is a lot, lot better. This is the gap now after we've pressed on and uh, that's about as far as I can go. I may need to adjust the polyester fender a little bit to go up like this. But you can see the gap is pretty narrow and once you put the piping in, you probably won't see anything of it. Just gonna put it in real quick so you, have, you can have a look. and the fender is not bolted down. You can see this is quite all right. All right, the rough bodywork is now basically done. We've got all these panels straightened up. We got the gaps more or less correct. And now it's the fine work. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to rub down all the paint to the bare metal so I can start welding up all the little holes we made. Also the hole for the filler neck for the fuel tank. I'm gonna fill that up because as you remember, I might fit a fuel cell inside the bonnet, inside the boot, I should say. And we have to do some welding here and there where the metal was cracked uh, because I had several areas where we pushed hard and some of the welds are kind of cracked and not in full, but we need to restore that. There's some small adjustments to be done on the fenders uh, actually uh, where they fit to the body panel. The holes don't align 100% for the 
bolts, but that's just getting a little bit more polyester out and then that's it. And then is the big paint job. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. And in the next video, you will see all the welding and all the putty being put up or the polyester and the fine adjustments on everything else on this car.